some time ago I posted a video where I was telling that I would be recruiting a postdoc and I made my choice and I thought that it's a good idea to explain a bit of why I chose a particular person and more importantly why I didn't even consider 90% of the applications that I received. So I got like 92 applications to the position which is pretty good compared to what we normally get. And I spend uh, several hours reading through all the applications, the motivation letters and the CVs. And most of those I really wouldn't have need to read through because just from the few first few lines of the motivation letter, it was clear that the person is not someone who I was looking for. But because I haven't been recruiting postdocs before, I thought that I just would read like what kind of people generally apply for these kind of positions. So uh, I chose the person who I, I chose because of, of three criteria. And um, the first criterion is that that person clearly demonstrated in their CV and in their motivation letter that they at least aspire to be in the same research community as, as I am. And if you take a look at my, my CV, for example, you can see that I go to academic management meeting every year. And if you've been to that meeting, then we are at least kind of being in the same community. So uh, uh, recruiting someone who doesn't even know the field, doesn't go to the central conferences would be possible, but then it's a lot more challenging thing for me to do is to, uh, the onboarding of that person if they don't really know like what are the discussions within management discipline. So number one uh, was that that this applicant demonstrated that they are in the same uh, same community. Also, uh, they are uh, the second thing that I looked at is relevant experience in submitting the journals where I want to publish. So this candidate had gotten a rejection already. So this is not in the in the uh, in the letter that the application letter, but based on interview, they had gotten uh, uh, he or she had gotten a rejection from a journal where I'm an editor of. So that clearly shows that you're actually trying to publish in the same outlets where I do publish. And uh, the third uh, thing that I looked at in in publications it was the like, what is the pipeline? What does the pipeline look like? Are you, do you have something in the review process, even if it's just submitted, that looks like it might be a publication in a journal where I care about. And uh, what I care about is the, for this project, the top methods journals, when I posted the video where I talked about what I want to do in the project, I mentioned that I want to publish in organizational research methods and psychological methods, and then in top management journals, which counts are uh, the FT50 journals. For example, understanding theory and practice would be very relevant for me. And something where I, I'm an, an editor board and I publish there once, and I want to publish there more. So uh, if you can show that you're at least trying to publish in these journals, even if you haven't been uh, successful in doing so, that is uh, a very, very good thing on my books. The third thing that I looked at is that do I know the supervisor or do I know the doctoral program? Because if you think about the person who comes for a postdoc, that's typically a person who is just about to graduate or has been recently graduated. And then you can of course evaluate that kind of person based on their publication uh, record, but most people don't have many publications. So if you have one, then that's that's fairly good. So most people don't have publications. So how do you how do you know what the person knows? Uh, well, you can just look at like is this person properly trained? Who trained this person? What kind of doctoral program did they go through? And uh, the person who I recruited had two supervisors. One was an entrepreneurship professor whom I actually met myself in a conference and who I recognized through his work. And then a statistics professor. So that's pretty much like an ideal combination of supervisors. So I, I can guarantee that this, or I can be pretty confident that this person that I picked is, is trained sufficiently to be productive from fairly on, if not from the day one of the project. So these are the things that I looked at. Uh, are you in the same research community? 
Do you have uh, the right aspiration level in your publications, preferably some experience already? And then uh, what is the doctoral program? Do I need, do I know the supervisor? All right. Uh, then a couple of things that I want to talk about. I'll post a couple of excerpts from motivation letters. And these are things that I'm going to talk about now that's going to be, that's going to be leading that no one is going to read your motivation letter. If you start your motivation letter like this, when you write your motivation letter, uh, most of the letters that I read didn't provide any information beyond the CV. So if you already have a CV that, that lists your uh, job experience, then writing the motivation letter, just explaining what you know, where you come from in like paragraph format instead of like list format that the CV does, it doesn't doesn't give me any information. I can just see like if you say that you have 10 years of experience in accounting or whatever field, I can see that from your CV. There's no need to uh, to write that in your motivation letter. So the purpose of the motivation letter is, is not really to talk about you. Uh, in a really great motivation letter, I want you to talk about me. So uh, you clearly show that you've done the homework, like you know who I am, what where I've been publishing. For example, you can you can say that uh, you are an editor in, in organization research methods. I would like to publish in that journal one day. I hope that you can teach me. That attracts my attention. So you want to tell me like, what is your connection to me? Is that that's in demonstrates motivation. If you just explain that you're looking for a job and you have uh, some qualifications that doesn't really tell me why you want to work with me. So I wanted to have specifically motivation uh, that uh, you are working with me. Then in these fairly generic motivation letters, there were uh, a few very common problems. One is that the motivation letter is, is entirely generic. It doesn't even mention the, uh, the position and in maybe the worst example, which is clearly an AI generated letter, there's a placeholder for the name of the university and name of the position. And those placeholders are left there in the letter that was submitted. So if you don't even bother to, to put the position where you're applying into your letter, why would I bother reading your letter? Uh, if, if you do this kind of non-personal motivation letters and, and just send the same letter in, let's say, 50 different universities or 100 different universities, you're just wasting every, everyone's time. You're wasting your time because the chances of getting uh, accepted to a postdoc position without a proper personally written motivation letter is exactly zero. It doesn't even round to zero, it's exactly zero. No one is going to hire you unless you can communicate why and how you think you are going to going to contribute to that particular project or that particular university. An entirely generic letter just doesn't do that. In most postdocs, we are not even forced to recruit. Like if I would have not found a good candidate from this, this pool of, of 92 applications that I got, I could have just said that I'm not going to take any one of these and I'll open a new call. So there's like, like, like no pressure for me to recruit anyone. And that means that if, if you can't articulate why you bring value to this particular project or this particular research group, then uh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna hire you. Uh, another thing that I can see is AI written letters. So it's clear that at least some letters, motivation letters were written by providing an AI, like ChatGPT, a link to my position, and then uh, CV. And that produces kind of semi-personal looking letters, but I can see that that doesn't really tell how you plan to contribute because those letters basically looked at my recommend my requirements and then they picked details from the CV and 
explain how the CV matches my requirements. But they don't go beyond the CV. So I can see from your CV what you know. If you say that you have lots of teaching experience, your CV tells that already. No need to report that in the, um, in the motivation letter. And uh, about personal letters, even if you're not applying for a project, but if you're applying for, let's say, a doctor student position, I've recruited exactly twice a, a person whom I've not met before. So uh, I've recruited this postdoc that I'm now recruiting, and then I've gotten one doctor student about five years ago who was uh, emailing me and, and, and asking for a doctoral student position. I get maybe every other other week an email about someone asking for a potential doctoral student position. So I get a lot of these. And if I've gotten a, a hundred of these in the last five years or 200 of these, the response, the success rate is like less than 1%. Uh, what made this one person successful is that instead of just spamming the same application everywhere, that person chose uh, that he, he decided that he wants to get a doctorate in a Finnish university. He wanted to do that in entrepreneurship. And then he picked uh, two or three Finnish professors whom he studied and then wrote specifically a letter to me and then some other people in some other countries explaining what they have done, how it's relevant to what I've done, and then asked if I would be willing to supervise them. And then that will get you to an interview. And then in an interview, it's your task to convince us that you're not entirely hopeless candidate. And if you do that, then we might hire you. But these non-personal uh, letters or letters that are written by AI to look as if they were personally written, they will just not get you anywhere. It's just a waste of time to fill applications like that. I don't frankly understand why some people who applied to my position wanted to come here except for, for that they wanted to have like any job. And if you're communicating that you're desperate for any job, then that's that's generally not a good strategy in academia for actually landing a job. So I hope these uh, few thoughts that I shared are useful for anyone who is considering uh, to applying to an academic position and uh, when you write applications. So uh, remember, motivation document is, is not about explaining you. Uh, you're supposed to be explaining what you know about the project or what you know about the person who, who you would like to supervise you. And how do you think that you can contribute to that project or that person's uh, uh, research? And, and that's, that's the thing. And generic letters, waste of time, don't write them.